Microphone. Uh, oh. Okay, give me 20. Okay, this is working. Good. Okay, students, uh, let's... Let's begin lecture. We're going to be doing a couple calculations and I'm going to do some sketching with you on the document camera at the end of, toward the end of lecture. Um, and we're going to do a lot of visual analysis today uh, so that we can tell the story of Hidden Figures, that movie, and because that story is basically the same thing that we're on. We're on the same trail as those guys or those ladies in Hidden Figures which I haven't seen yet, but I'm going to see this weekend, I hope. Before we do that, I have a news flash concerning SI. Maria? Hi, everyone. My name is Maria Spaghetti. I'm your SI leader. I'm normally in the early row class, so you won't be seeing me throughout the semester. We are in lecture, but I do attend it. And currently, we're still working on our SI schedule, which should be posted sometime next week. But today, right after this class at 1.30, we are going to have our first session. It's going to be in Engineering Building 1, Room 3 or 383. If you, wanna, if you have a chance to go there, please come by. If you have a few questions about it, just go there, and I'll be happy to answer. If you, if you have some questions about this lecture or any other lectures that you have attended so far, just come with me. We'll go over whatever it is that you want to. And... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Once I have the whole schedule ready, it will be posted here and on web courses as well. So we'll keep you updated on that. Okay, great. Thank you, Maria. And uh, Maria usually attends the morning lecture. And she's here today because her other class got canceled. But uh, yeah, SI today at 1.30 right after class in Engineering 1, room 383. And if you can go one time a week, that's going to be helpful. The more you can go, the better. If you can't go, you can't go. But do try to go if you can. All right. Uh, I want to uh, do a, a little look back at what we were studying yesterday, or I should say Tuesday, concerning the graphs of motion. And we, we looked at two basic kinds. Uh, the first one was uh, basically a graph uh, on, for instance, XY graph paper of position versus time. And a way to kind of model that is uh, to show the all the positions over time is to use a set of strobe photographs. You know, every tenth of a second or every uh, thousandth of a second if you really got something that's moving fast. All right. And just like this little diagram of cars, if you keep all those photographs together, um, you know, you can really analyze quite a bit. Now, we're going to be doing a bundle. Uh, how many questions have we got? Seven. We've got seven clicker questions today. Right, so get your clicker out right now because we're going to do a clicker question together uh, concerning this diagram. So, and, and also, I would like to um, say to you and to all, that your clicker questions constitute today a good portion of the lecture notes. So make a good sketch of this car moving left to right. And, uh, you know, and then we're going to do a clicker question with it. Um, and uh, as always, I'll bring the picture up again here in just a second. Um, if you haven't used your clicker yet, and this is the first day to use it, you, you hold the power button down until the big square flashes. And then you type in BB, and that will get you the Go Nitro message, and then the Ready message. Who's got Ready? All right, good. A bunch of you. All right. Now, if you haven't got your eye clicker, you have until... Uh, January 31st, that's two Tuesdays from now, to get it squared away. And bonus points for every day that you're registered, 
uh, before that. So a bonus today. If then we just resynchronized the roster. So if you registered before class today, you're going to get a bonus point. All right. If you register after class, you'll get a bonus point uh, next week. All right. Anyways, um, here we go. Let's go with question number one. And there's the simulated strobe photo again. What does the photo show? And remember, make a, make a note of this because uh, I'm going to give you some comments concerning this particular question and this diagram. And it's important. Okay, 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, <coughs> One. Okay, 93 students answered. Ah, uh, yeah, you guys did pretty good. The car is moving rightward and it's speeding up. Now, your note on this question is the following. The visual cue, the visual fact that tells you it's speeding up as it moves to the right is that the distance between strobe flashes is getting bigger, right? Here's the first two strobe flashes over here on the left, and it's going, but it's, it only covers a little bit of ground in that um, time interval, 0 0.2 seconds. Now, the last time interval is over here. In this 0 0.2 second time interval, yeah, he's covering a lot more ground. Therefore, you could say he's going faster, all right? And that tells you that, yeah, you're accelerating, and your acceleration is positive. You're gaining speed. Your delta V is positive. Now, the other thing that we looked at, and make yourself a good sketch of this velocity graph, this is the velocity versus time graph, all right? Now, this is not a spatial graph. It is an abstract graph, velocity versus time but it still has a lot of meaning for us. Now, the, in this particular one, I've labeled the vertical axis V subscript X, which means it's the horizontal part of the velocity. So, for instance, if, you, if, if I throw a baseball from here over towards that door, it's going to arc upward and also move horizontally, and then it's going to arc downward by the time it gets to the door, all right? And that means if it's, if it's going upward, I've got some Y component, some upward component, vertical component, and if it's heading to the, the door, so I have some, some X component, some horizontal component to the velocity, all right? So in space, you have to, uh, you know, like the guys at NASA, when they're modeling a spacecraft, heading for Mars or heading for the moon or something, they've got to do all three dimensions and they've got to do it really precisely. Uh, but this one's VX. Okay, now, um, in our class and generally speaking, most people do it this way. A positive X component of the velocity means you're moving to the right. Make a note of that. And we're going to make a lot of interpretation of this particular graph. Negative means you're heading over here to the left. All right. So the negative sign tells you the direction. It does double duty. And the, the you know, the arithmetic in uh, handles, the normal rules of arithmetic handle everything perfectly if you first assign a negative sign for anything that's leftward and a positive sign for anything that's rightward. All right. Now, let me make a little more room here. Okay. Now, First comment about the velocity graph, uh, the width of it, it's run, as in rise over run. Remember that from a high school geometry class, rise over run. The run, that means something. We're going to ask a question about it in a second. The height of the graph, that also means something. All right, The rise, 
So the rise means something, the run means something, and therefore you might say to yourself, well, Dr. B, does rise over run uh, mean something? And the answer is yes, it does. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. And that's why I say your clicker questions are a integral part of your lecture notes for today. Now, sometimes I don't make them that way. You know, sometimes they're just a review from the homework or, you know, something else. But today it's quite a bit. The polygon that the velocity uh, graph forms with the time axis also means something. All right. And so we have a lot of physical meaning that we extract from the geometric layout of this abstract velocity graph. I mean, if we were just in geometry class, you know, rise over run, slope, all that stuff would be, you know, cut and dried. But here we interpret it as being something to do with motion, you know, like a distance or a time or something like that. So let's keep going. Let's do some more eye clicker questions. And uh, make sure you have a good sketch of this baby. And make sure it's a fairly good sized sketch because we want to add some notes to it um, and, a, as we comment along. All right? So resketch it if you have to. Make sure it's good and big. In other words, I always tell students, you know, that when they're handing in papers to me, you know, in other classes, you know, homework or an exam or something, if I can cover up your diagram with my thumb, it's too small. All right. And so make your, your diagram nice and big. All right, here we go. Here's the diagram over there to the right. The full graph shows what? Oh, it should say the full graph shows that the object blank. A little typo there. Sorry about that. A, B, C, or D, or E. Ooh. Aha. Ooh, this is interesting. Think. When you're doing homework, when you're doing exams, and when you're doing clicker questions in class, read carefully and think. Thinking is the challenge. Think about the concepts here. 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on. Zero. 97 people answered. Very good. All right. I'm not going to tell you the answer yet, but I am going to show you what you guys voted for. Look at that. Now, you know what that tells me? By the way, most of you guys got the previous question right. It was like 87% or something like that. Got it right. This one, look at that. There's a spread of opinion. So if you were... If you were, you know, making a if everybody in here was trying to make a decision based on, you know, to invest a million dollars based on this question, you'd have a lot of talking to do. Think of it that way. So let's talk it over. Go ahead and switch over. The correct answer is here. It's a move, initially moving to the right, and then it comes to a stop, and then it moves leftward. And look at it. Uh, this part of the graph up here, the upper half where this black arrow is, yeah, those are positive velocity numbers. So that means rightward. It's, it's moving, you know, at whatever speed. Now, all the speeds here are 2 meters per second or smaller. And then by the same token, down here in the second half of the motion, it's, you're moving, whoop, over here to the left, all right? Now there's a second in time where you stop. That's right here. That's at one second, halfway through the interval, all right? So you're going to the right. 
you stop, you slow down, you ease to a stop, and you start coming back this way. All right? So this is a good description of the motion. And hey, you guys, remember, Galileo's conviction. We're, we're doing the Galileo thing. That's what we're doing. And his conviction was the physical universe is intelligible and not random. It is describable using mathematical statements based on observation and measurement. And that's what we're doing. Because all these, this, this particular graph, there's all kinds of formulas behind it. We already tackled some of those formulas last time. You know, one half AT squared. Let's keep going. Next question, question three. Okay. The run of the graph. What does that mean? What's the meaning of that? The run. Two seconds. Here it is. There's the extent of it, this little bracket here. All right. What's the meaning of that? Ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on, you guys. Okay. Ninety-six. Uh, go ahead and show them the display, dear. All right. Now this one, uh, your million million dollar decision. It's pretty clear cut. Not much, a little bit of discussion, but not much. And go ahead and switch back. This one, the answer is C. Okay. Uh, another way, and here's a, here's a side note that you can make for this part of the lecture, for this question. Um, synonymous with duration of the motion, you could say the word elapsed time. The run is also describable as the elapsed time. Okay, you could say... The duration or the elapsed time or delta T if you want. You know, if you want to be a little bit more mathematical. But yeah, that's a good description of it. Next question. Question four. Here we go. The rise of the graph. Question four. If you please. All right. What does the rise mean? And a rise of the Here's the rise over here in blue. Okay, this little black bracket over here to the right, far right, that's your, you know, rise over. And actually, it's not a rise, it's a dip. Because it's going down to the right. It's decreasing. What's the meaning of that? Oh, ho. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ching. All right, let's look at this display. All right, now we got some splaining to do here. All right, now it's not all four opinions and. Yeah, well, actually, four, only two people voted for C. Uh, why did you vote for C? Because that was just the answer for the previous one. And this is, and this is a different measure. This is the vertical. And, and the answer is, uh, go ahead. We still have some discussion about the three options. Um, this is the delta V. It's a, it's a vertical measurement, and the vertical scale is velocity. So a change from top to bottom, vertically, is a delta V, the change in the velocity. All right? So the, 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 the rise here, or the neg it's negative, it's, you know, it'd be a negative number, uh, is the delta V. All right? 
Now, I have another question for you. Question uh, five. Rise over run. What does that mean? All right, Dr. B, rise means something. Run means something. What does rise over run? The quotient of rise over run. I mean, it works out. You know, the, the, the rise is negative four meters per second. The run is two seconds. The quotient, therefore, is negative two meters per second per second. Uh, and that's a unit for, of acceleration, meters per second squared. But what does that mean? 20 seconds. Get your clicker out, young man. You got clicking to do. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, a hundred people voted. Nice. Click. All right. Go ahead and show the display. All right. So the, notice how we've, now that we've gone and analyzed it, and you guys have gotten a little bit of instruction as we go, things are narrowing down. I mean, there's not as much discussion. But basically, two items of discussion. Okay, go ahead. And let's take a look. This is the actual uh, answer. And, it, and what it means is the quotient is delta V, the rise, over delta T, the run. Okay? De delta V over delta T, that's the definition of acceleration. And, that's, and so if you think about the geometry of the graph, the rise over the run physically would be a delta V over a delta T, and that's acceleration. Matter of fact, think about another sentence that you could write. Now, let's think about this one. This is more about speeds. It slows down, stops. And that, if I use the word stop, that's a statement about speed. It means V equals zero. All right? Uh, and then it starts acquiring leftward speed. And by the way, what's the interpretation of the distance triangle. Here's the distance triangle. The first one. I'm going to shade it in here. Here it is. All right. I shaded it in. What's that mean? What's the physical meaning of that? Uh, that so this is question six. And there are no uh, goofy answers here, so you have to think. What's the area of that distance triangle? It's a pretty cinchy calculation, but uh, it's not. Okay, 10 seconds, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, show them this display, please, Darian. Now, look at that. Definitely a spread of information. So, um, let's take a look at the actual calculation. You've got a spread of opinion. Now, the correct answer is one meter. Let's work it out. Area for a, a triangle, one half base times height, as we reviewed last time. Uh, so, okay, the base of this first half 
is 1.0 seconds. Okay, so there's a 0 0.5 for the one half, and then 1.0 seconds, and then the height or the you know the height of this triangle is 2.0 meters per second. You cancel the seconds from the base and the height, and you're left with uh, one meter. And that's option C. And physically, you would interpret that in this way, that one meter is the distance that you traveled on its way to the right after time t equals zero. So if you, you know, it doesn't really tell you the exact position unless you also know the position at time t equals zero. What this tells you is how far you traveled away from whatever that position was. If you also know the position, you know, like, uh, the, you know, the uh, two meters, uh, to x equals 2.5 meters, for instance, then you would say, all right, two me uh, two, one second later, I'm at uh, 3.5 meters, okay? All right, now, so there's the correct answer. And by the way, this is, this is where we got the basic um, easy distance triangle formula. Now, we're going to be looking at distance triangles and distance rectangles out the wazoo today because we're going to be talking about hidden figures. But we have a, a few more clicking questions to go. Let's keep going. And let's make a spatial map of what we've got so far. Now, up here in the upper right, there's my velocity graph. And let's do a physical layout of what we know. Question. Yeah, because the area one half base times height geometrically is the same as one half at squared <laughs> dynamically. One half at squared is about dynamics, okay, motion. Uh, one half base times height is geometry, you know. So, but the math is the same. So, and that's why we're using it. All right. So you're. Your, your map of positions and your time signature. So here's your time stamp up above the, the x-axis. T equals 0, 0.0 seconds here. T equals 1.0 seconds here. And here are the two positions. Okay. Nothing fancy about it. You know, we, we just made two calculate. Well, one, we, we made one assumption about the initial position. And then uh, for convenience, 0, 0.0 meters. And then we computed the second position at time t equals 1.0 seconds, all right? So, uh, and based on this distance triangle calculation up here in the upper right, I kind of shrank it down a little bit for you. Now, um, let me pause for questions about this. Okay, let's try another eye clicker question. You ready? You got your clicker ready back there? You came right? Good. All right. Are you registered? Yeah. Good. You're cooking. Now this one, I'm not going to apologize, but I am going to tell you that this question may burn your brain to a crispy crunch. <laughs> What is the object's position at time t equals 2.0 seconds? Dun, 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 dun. <coughs> Did you start this one? This is the last this one. Okay. And here's the second distance triangle. You may want to, you know, darken that one in too. I mean, just, you know, for... You don't have a clicker? You're not taking notes either. 
you're not taking notes. Some people, that's good. Yeah. All right. Are you in web courses? What's your last name? Can you check? Can you get into web courses? C. Okay. She's into music and stuff. Many of the smartest people are, I've noticed. Have we got them? Excellent. Okay, the, the, the syllabus is PDF inside web courses. Um, you won't be able to do homework one, but it was pretty small anyways. Homework two is going to be ginormous. Tackle it tonight. And, you'll be, and it's in web courses. So. Uh, CBNS, UCF bookstore if you absolutely have to. You know, or a friend. You know. And if you have a roommate or somebody that's got one, you, know, you can use theirs if they're not using it Tuesday and Thursday at noon. So just register it. Anyways, get the syllabus and you know, we'll talk some more about it next week. Okay, we got some answers here. Okay, 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ching. All right, let's look at the display. All right, now here's the layout of your answers. Now there's a little bit of uh, controversy between 2 meters zero meters and negative 1.0 meters. So that negative 1.0 meters would be uh, off to the left. Can you switch back to the display now? A few people voted for the others. The answer uh, is zero. Now let's look at why that's the case. All right. So if, if you voted for something other than D uh, and from the looks of it about uh, 42 percent of you did. Uh, 52 percent of you did. The majority of you did. Um, here's what you want to remember. This particular triangle, the second distance triangle, it's the same size as the other one. So the area, one half base times height, corresponds to a distance, one half at squared, of one meter. But it's below the axis in the negative velocity region. That means it's moving left for one meter. So if you start it at one meter out and then you go back to the left for one meter, where do you end up? 0, 0.0. The initial. Now. If I had a different size triangle or even a different shape triangle, you know, slightly different acceleration, you know, then I, may, I might not be back at, at the initial point. You know, it's wherever the distance triangles and the distance rectangles take you. All right? Side comment. If the velocity graph, therefore, is under the time axis, in other words, if the velocity graphs down the negatives, you interpret the area as a negative delta x. All right? So it doesn't add to the x component. It subtracts. It's a negative delta x. You, you've lost rightwardness. And you've moved to the left. However many meters or centimeters or light years uh, your motion takes you. Questions? <coughs> okay, let's keep going. Uh, now, I've been blabbing my big mouth about this movie, Hidden Figures. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to see it. And the thing is, these, you know, Hollywood movies, a lot of times they take a lot of liberties. 
you know, with the story. You know, like the detective in the movie. It's you know, it's based on a real life detective, but in the movie he's extremely handsome or extremely smart, whereas in real life he's not that handsome and he's just really lucky he's not that smart. You know, so they take a lot of liberties. Uh, so I'm not going to give a whole lot of credence to the movie itself because here is the real, one of them anyways, this lady on the left, Dorothy Vaughn. The movie's about her, and this is a picture of her from back in the 60s. Look at that. She's drinking a Coca-Cola, taking a little break from grinding out the numbers. And what I'm going to show you is how Dorothy Vaughn et al., uh, did the same thing we've been doing, but for a much trickier system. Because if you think about it, what we've talked about is constant velocity, horizontal line segment, velocity graph, distance rectangle, ching, we got it. Uniform acceleration, nice and smooth. Straight line segment, either tilted uh, down to the right or tilted up to the right for speeding up. We got it, one half AT squared, ching. But a spacecraft, a spacecraft, oh my friends, acceleration is not constant. It's not smooth, it's changing. So, what we're going to do is use our technology, distance polygons, to understand how. The hidden fig how uh, Miss Vaughn and all her uh, companions figured out the position of a spacecraft going 18,000 miles an hour, because that's the problem that they were looking at. That's how fast a spacecraft goes up at the at the orbit uh, of the space station and, and the and the Gemini, the, the Mercury capsules and everything, when they were orbiting Earth, yep, that's about where they were. 17, 18,000 miles an hour. And so let's review what we know so far. So let's recite for our BOSS, Professor Galileo, what we know. What do you know? All right, first of all, constant velocity. Yeah, we got it. Delta V equals V delta T based on the definition of velocity. Uh, the streamlined version of it is over here to the right, d equals vt, basically the same formula. The velocity graph, if you have constant velocity, is a horizontal line segment. And the way that we use the velocity graph to figure out the distance is distance rectangle. Base times height. And this formula, upper right, d equals vt, that's a distance rectangle formula. I mean, you could think of it, yep, distance rectangle. You know, whatever the v is, whatever your t is, you know, your elapsed time could be a thousandth of a second, could be a day. You know, if you're, if you're a spacecraft in the outer solar system, and we've got a few that are way out there, uh, delta t of a day is not too bad, I guess. Accelerating systems, if we start from rest or if we have initial speed and then final VF is zero, i.e. we come to a stop, yeah, we can handle that. That's just one half AT squared. That's my second big formula on the right. Yeah, we got that. All right. And all it is is, you know, the velocity graph is a straight line segment, but it has a slope. Either it's sloping up to the right for increasing speed from rest, or it's sloping down from initial speed down to rest, to a stop, down to the right. Uh, but we can handle it. The distance triangle, yeah, 1 half AT squared. It's what we call in physics a walk in the park. All right, but... What if the velocity does not change uniformly? All right. Number two, they're accelerating. Yeah, velocity is changing, but it's uniform. Straight line segment. At a straight line segment, 
uh, tilt, you know, whatever the rise over the run is. It's the same tilt angle all the way through. But what if you have something that doesn't change uniform? In other words, it starts at a good acceleration, and then it starts, acceleration starts to really blaze. You know, how do you handle that? Yeah. You're talking about a problem like a spacecraft. So go ahead and draw kind of a curvaceous velocity graph, starting from rest. Okay. And let's make it V subscript Y, the Y component of the speed. So, you know, a, a, a rocket blasting off from Cape Canaveral from Kennedy Space Center, you know, it's going to have a Y component, and then it's going to have a horizontal component, uh, an X component, and a Z component, you know. So three components. So let's just do one component, V subscript Y. Okay, and let's say that, you know, the upward component, you know, the blast off direction, the Y direction, uh, it starts out and it changes a little bit, a little bit of curve to it. And, hey, you guys, those are not straight line segments, most of that. There's some bend in it. There's some curves. We can handle it. And those ladies and, and, uh, and their companions in hidden figures, yeah, they, they look at something like that. Just give me five minutes. You know, they look at that. They, they look at that and they say, Dr. B, that's a walk in the park. And it, and it really is. And I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so let's go to the document camera. Can you switch to document camera now? And what we're going to do, um, I'm going to embed a PDF. I'm going to scan these documents. And I'm going to embed them in the YouTube. Okay, so you take notes, and I'm going to be writing stuff down on the document cam here, and then it'll be in, in the YouTube for, for review. And actually, I'll also post the PDFs in web courses, too. That'll be easy. All right, so let me get this. Okay, here we go. Okay, Physical Science 1121, Section 2, The After Lunch Bunch. Well, theoretically, it's the after lunch bunch, and the date is 1-19-17. Uh, okay, now, our target concept is non-uniform acceleration, um, and what we want to do is get positions. We want to be able to say, is my spacecraft going to land on Mars, or is it going to go way past Mars and be lost in space, or is it going to hit Mars too fast? You know, we got to, we, you know, or the Moon, you know, or you know, the Atlantic Ocean. If you're trying to figure out the trajectory of the land, or the space shuttle when it comes to land, you know, they got to, do you know, you know where they start to leave orbit for the space shuttle? Like over uh, the continent of Africa and coming and they and they deorbit over the Indian Ocean. Oh, that's on the other side of the world from us. And then they slow, you know. So they're in the southern Indian Ocean and they slow down and over the Pacific Ocean. You know what they do to burn off speed? They go through S turns. You know, can you imagine? They're going thousands of miles an hour. You know, like like five six thousand miles an hour. And they're in this plane. It looks like a brick, right? It's not very graceful looking. But they're taking S-turns like this. And they're burning off speed. They start a turn down by uh, Australia. And by the time their turn is finished, they're up by Hawaii. Okay, and then they got to turn one more time and get over to... And by the time they're done with the second S-turn, they're over by California. And then they're getting down closer to the atmosphere and getting closer to the landing spot. And they come to a landing here in Florida, you know, and they tilt it up so that they're, they're going into the atmosphere, nose up, and hopefully everything goes good. And they, oh man, can you imagine? Man, I get excited just thinking about it. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about non uniform accelerations, but let's talk about the stuff that we know. Okay, first thing we know, let's draw V versus time. 
B-Y. Uniform. Okay, so at some time T1, we have a uniform velocity. Uh, whatever this is. So this might be 2.3 meters per second, for example. And we know that the distance is the area, the distance traveled after time t equals zero. Okay, so here's t equals zero down here. All right. And we know that the distance traveled out to time t1, whatever it is, is the area of this rectangle. Okay, so the area of the rectangle becomes V delta T, and V is a constant. All right, so we know how to handle that, all right? But uh, hidden figures, you need a little bit more than that. Well, here's one thing we know how to handle. <coughs> slow down, uniform slow down. So let's do Vy, and let's say that it's moving upward at 90 meters per second initially, and over the course of time, gradual straight line, slow down, out here to time T2, all right? And here's time T equals zero, 0, 0.0 seconds. All right, now, here's my, my rise, or as we say, dynamically, delta V. And here's my run, or as we say, dynamically, elapsed time, delta T. The slope, which is rise over run, in geometry class, in physics class, is delta V over delta T, and that's the acceleration. And it's uniform. If it's a straight line segment, then it's uniform. Okay? So that's a slowdown. And the distance is the area in here. All right, so shade in this distance triangle. And Professor Gall, you know, I don't know if he thought about a velocity graph or not, but he knew um, the distance formula, one-half at squared. All right, question. Got it? Okay. Another thing that we know, or we can handle if we have to, is a speed up. So let's do a velocity graph for something speeding up. This one over here is slowing down. And let's do a speed up. So we start at time t equals zero at rest. Oh, and by the way, over here, time t2, v is equal to zero, um, and it stopped. But over here, we're starting at zero. Let's make this a fast speed up. So this one's kind of steep. All right. And by the time you get to time t3, you're up at this speed up here, whatever it is. So here's your delta v. Here's your delta t. Um, the acceleration, so uniform speed up um, procedure. Um, acceleration is positive and constant. And up here, the acceleration up here is negatory for the slowdown up here. It's constant and negative. But down here it's constant and positive for a uniform speed up, uniform acceleration. 
Um, and yeah, distance is the area of this triangle. Pretty cinchy. The distance triangle. So we have two different flavors of polygons. We have the distance triangle and we have the distance rectangle. All right. Now, let's draw some, let's get to our target. Our target is up here, non-uniform acceleration. Let's get to that. All right. And I'm going to draw a big one. Let me draw the whole thing and then you kind of make a sketch. And actually, I'm going to make two of them. So, make it fairly good size here. I'm going to try to make two that are copies of each other. Okay, now this one, now don't copy it until I finish it, all right? I'm going to start out fairly straight down here. It's going to look like a straight line segment, but I'm going to get steeper and steeper. So let me start out fairly straight, and now I'm going to start getting steeper and steeper, all right? All right, now I'm really accelerating. All right, my slope is getting bigger and bigger. All right. Okay, so whatever that time is, and here's 0, 0.0 seconds. And let's say that this speed here is... Um, 105 meters per second. We're really going fast. All right. That is non-uniform acceleration. Now here's how you can tell. The slope, I'm, I'm leaning my pencil along the, the diagram down here. The slope is approximately there. That's the tilt angle early in the motion. Now up here, the tilt angle is much, that's pretty, let me get it. Okay, the tilt angle there is quite a bit steeper. So we got to handle that. Now, the ladies in Hidden Figures, they said, yep, no problem. We can ha handle this. It's not a problem. Dr. B, your students could handle it if they had to. So let's handle it. You know, this thing, it's not a, polygon. It's a geometric figure. The area is the, you know, is the, is the distance, the area underneath here. And it's, it's not quite rect, it's not quite triangular. It's definitely not rectangular. Okay. But you could say, well, yeah, it's kind of almost triangular. So your first Estimate fast, or as they say in rocket science, rocket science, your quick and dirty estimate is to say, let's use it. Let's let's consider that to be a triangle. One half base times height. It won't be that accurate but it'll be in the right ballpark, you know. The true distance will be a little bit less than this. But in this one, one half times, okay, let's say that T4 is eight seconds, right, just for conversation purposes. Okay, so my base is eight seconds. And my height is 105 meters per second. Okay, so my distance 
is uh, calculation time. 420. Anybody verify that? 420? Okay, 420 meters. Now, this is not super accurate, but it gives you something that's going to... Because what you've done, you've done the area for this velocity graph. So this is your approximation velocity graph. And it, that's not true. But it's useful as an approximation. And you know, when you're doing computer programs, a lot of times what you want to do is make an estimate uh, of the answer so you at least know where you're supposed to end up. Now, we look at the, let me ask you this, IQ test, visual IQ test. The true distance, the shaded in the area, the true distance, greater than or less than 420? Less than, because it doesn't fill out. The true distance doesn't fill out the whole triangle. But for quick and dirty, this is good. All right. Now, let me go down and copy that. Let's see if I can. You guys try to do a second copy. Because we're going to mark this one up. We can't make... All right, now, how do they get better accuracy? That's what we're going to, I'm going to show you right now. Well, what they do is, so let's, let me put this in eight seconds. Okay, let me get, divide it. Okay, try to divide yours in half. Okay, that's four. So this is six. This would be five, seven, etc. Now here's what they do. All right. Instead of this really blunderbuss, quick and dirty, but not very accurate estimate, here's what they do. They divide it up into a set of smaller polygons. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right here. All right, now that, it's the top of that is curved. Hold on a second, my, my microphone's blooped up. Okay. The top of this is curved. All right, but it's a lot better if if I replace replacing the top with a straight line segment. It's way better. I'm still overestimating, but it's way better because my base delta T is one second. Over here, delta T is eight seconds, all right? So the delta T, the base here is eight seconds. Okay, yeah, you can do that, but it's not gonna be that accurate. All right, so delta T is eight seconds up here. This one, make it a shorter delta T. And then, let's go to the third page. Okay, so this is page two up here. Let's go to the third page. And let's look at it. I'm just gonna draw the time axis. Okay, so here is five seconds, and here's six seconds. Okay, so this is a blow up of that last little polygon. And the top of it, 
I'm going to exaggerate the curve. Go ahead and exaggerate the curve a little bit. All right. Now, handling that curve is tricky. Draw a dotted line segment, straight line segment. Now, we're still, if, if we can figure out the shape of that, now let me copy it down here. Here's my, here's the shape that I'm going to pretend that I've got. Okay, so this is delta t, one second. And these two speeds up here are whatever they are, whatever they happen to be. And then a straight line segment between them. Now, what kind of a geometric figure do you call that? Yeah, that's a trapezoid. Right? So this is a trapezoid. Okay. So the area is the distance traveled in one second after t equals uh, five seconds. Okay, so now this is still an overestimate. So this is an overestimate, but it's not nearly as bad as the first one. And the first one was really bodacious. You know, a lot of overestimation. This one, you just got a little sliver up here. That's not too bad. All right. And if, you're, if your rocket is moving at 1,000 miles an hour or 18,000 miles an hour, even this little sliver up here might lead to catastrophe. So how do they deal with it? Hidden figures... They handle it the following way. Delta T, the base of my trapezoid, smaller and smaller. So in other words, they might use uh, delta T equal to 0 0.01 seconds. Every millisecond of flight, they recalculate position. Because in a millisecond, you're really moving quite a bit if you're going at 18,000 miles an hour. Matter of fact, that would be a good homework problem. Hmm. Good. But how do you figure out the area of this trapezoid? How do you do it? It's flat on the bottom, yeah, right here. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's a full trapezoid. Oh, you're thinking? No, we can we can handle this. We can. We don't have to. We don't have to. I know what you're saying. Do do a bigger figure and cut it in half. No, nah, let's cut. Let's do this figure. And you know what to do. So I'm not gonna. We talked about this in office hours. What do you think? Ding! Area of a triangle, right there. And down here, area of a rectangle. What? We are, hey, you guys, you already know what the hidden figures people and every PhD down at Mission Control to this day, you know what they're doing. They're doing distance rectangle. Right here. And they're doing the distance triangle. Right here. And they're doing a lot of them. They do it a zillion times with a really short delta T. And then they add them all up. And they get the position two days from now when the spacecraft is getting close to the moon. That is how they do it. So you guys, 
Maybe you should try out for a, a position at NASA. You know, th this is the basics of it. This is all they do. I mean, and, and you know, when I'm doing uh, theoretical astrophysics, you know, I'm not working with, technically I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm a, but theoretical astrophysics, you know, figuring out what a black hole is going to do and how it's going to explode and all this stuff. We do this out the wazoo. Raise your hand if you've been in calculus class. All right. And what they didn't teach you probably is that this is the method of a numerically approximating the integrals that you look up in the back of your calculus book. That's all that they're doing. And this thing, doing this a zillion times with a zillion little delta t's, is how we numerically on a computer do calculus for something we don't, you know, know the exact formula. We just grind out a zillion of these babies. We do it and try to, and then and have somebody else doing it to double check, and then somebody else to double check the double check. Okay, so you you, you know, so you want to try to, you know, when you got a man up in space, you don't want to miss. That's a life. So you have to have it right. So they have a lot of people double checking. And but this is basically what they're doing. So you guys now have the technology. You have the concept. You know what they're doing. And all they're really doing is telling computers, you know, it's, it's, it's like on, uh, on that Star Trek, you know, they, he picks up the, the microphone and goes, computer, and he tells the computer what to do. And that's all they're doing. They're telling, computer, give me some trapezoids that end up at the moon. That's all. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you, you really are, you're all, if you use a trapezoid rule like this, that's what it's called, the trapezoid rule, you're always underestimating, or, you know, the other thing you could do is do this trapezoid, you know, underestimate, oh, uh, you know, underestimate, but you're, you're always making a slight over or underestimate, but if you're, if you're over and under, underestimate is acceptably close, you're good. Yeah. Welcome to calculus class 4,000. I mean, that's a, that's a tricky calculus problem. But yeah, that's what they do. That's what I do. Yep. Another question. Nikki, how do you feel? Nicole, how do you feel? You ready to join NASA? Go for it. All right, switch me over to the display, please. Um, and, you know, this is really exciting to me. And because I'm so excited, Joanna, right? Joanna was an off hour, so I learned the name. Uh, because I'm so excited, I'm going to give you a big homework assignment for the weekend. It'll be due Tuesday. You're dismissed. It'll activate by 5 p.m. tonight. Good class. See you on Tuesday. Uh, lights up, please. Yeah. So what would be your, um, your distance, though, for this one? Because so if you did this, mm -hmm. what's your distance? Since your time is one second. Yeah, and so so basically what you have to do is do it for, we did it, we modeled it for this one, but you got to do it for this one. You got to do it for all the other ones down here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, do all these ones out here as right. far out as you need to. Right. And we're still using the 105 mil meters per second? So well, that's just, that's just, uh, no, that's just uh, a figure uh, of conversation. In other okay. words, just to have something to talk oh, about. But it could be. So basically what they do is they predict what the next point is going to be, okay. and then they figure out where that's going to be, and they check, okay, am I on the moon, or you right. know, am I on the right way to the moon? And, you know, so, so then we don't know that this is right for each small Yeah, section. and that's why you have to start, they have to do it a million times mm -hmm. and run a million of these simulations, well, not a million, but yeah. a number of simulations, and then when they just get the right one, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't use up all their fuel and lands at the right place, then they go... Right. And then they double check it all again, you know. Absolutely. 
you know, so they might, so then they might, they might get the good one and they say, all right, that was for um, 0.001 mm -hmm. delta T. Let's do it again for 0.0001. Okay. Do it all again. See if and it looks we're good. We're playing into the distance on triangle. Or two. Yeah, and then you're going to do 10 times as many distance trapezoids. Okay. And hopefully you'll still come at the right point on the moon mm -hmm. on the day you want and you haven't used all your fuel. And if you do, then you're good. And my, uh, my other question is, how would you know the height since you got to add the height into this? <laughs> come back next week and we'll talk about this some more. Okay. <laughs> We've just gotten started. Okay, so that's just, okay. There's a lot more to talk about because yeah, we haven't even talked about Newton's laws of motion. Okay, I was being shook. I wasn't sure what the height was for those. And I have one more question too. We're going back to the um, clicker question. We used to um, talk about this one, mm -hmm. how it um, ended up at B zero. So pretty much since we're starting on the positive, you go right, but instead of the negative, you're going back left. So all you do is going to here, then going to here, then going back, pretty much. No, you're thinking you're thinking spatially. Yeah. That's not a spatial graph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So think about it as this way. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's your position. Right. You start here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, five strobe photos. Yes. Then you stop. No, actually, it should be. This is no good. It should be the other way. It should be big, smaller, smaller. Okay. Yeah, see you later. Abigail, smaller, 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 and finally here, you stop, mm -hmm. you turn around, and then on the way back, I'll change to blue, you basically replicate the same positions on the way back, so these are every tenth of a second, right. for instance, and then by the time you get back here, you're really moving fast in this direction, whereas in starting out, you were going oh, fast yeah. in this direction. Right, okay. you right, the so, left, you so the here's negatives. here's really fast in the leftward direction. Yeah. Here's really fast in the rightward direction. Right, this is this is what you'd see from space if you if you know if you take a bunch of photos, mm -hmm. and that's what the you know that's what your speedometer would. Yeah, okay. that's right. All right, that makes so much sense now. All right, thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Doctor, real quick, can I disconnect all this? No, you have to stop it. Well, first. I mean, yeah, but is that? I have to. I, I recorded.